What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at making a tongue and groove ceiling. Now, this is obviously something very specific. I received this from a comment from a YouTube subscriber and this seemed like a great idea because it's, you know, it's something that's done quite a lot. Obviously tongue and groove ceilings, ship lab, kind of kind of the same, but different. Um, done quite a lot, but how do you model that? Well, what's the best way to model it? Obviously, there's a hundred ways to model it. I'm not going to say that this way is the best way or the only way. Um, it's, I guess you could say, more or less the way I prefer uh, because it seems to me a bit easier, more intuitive, makes the most sense, yada, yada. But again, always take this how you will, do what you want with it, and uh, let's get into it. But before that, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something or just like the video, which I hope, Please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. Okay, get into it now. We're going to make a tongue and groove ceiling. So how would we do that? Well, you would think, well, we go to ceiling and we draw a ceiling here. Well, actually, this is not using a ceiling at all, which, <laughs> despite the name, is not at all. Now, I will say this, the, the way we're going to do it is going to apply to whether this tongue and groove happens to be on a ceiling, a wall, anything. I would say def maybe not a floor because you yeah there's better ways to deal with floors but regardless let's go ahead and look at this from a ceiling perspective well if you are familiar with slope glazing we're ultimately going to use that and you can find the slope glazing in roofs um, obviously I'll just place it on level two I'm in a default so nothing fantastic here so here's slope glazing and so slope glazing while this seems to be something really specific to a roof whatever it's it works and it functions the exact same way as any sort of curtain wall. Now, and I, <laughs> I say that, and I'm actually going to show you a curtain wall first because in Revit 2022, of course, now we we can we can, I believe this is as of 2021 as well, but especially with 2022, I'm just going to draw this in here. We can actually slant this, and so I can come in here. I can say, well, this cross section is not vertical; it's going to be slanted, and and then the question is, what is this angle? Well, maybe you're ceilings at a 60 degree angle you can do it and it looks absurd in this floor plan but let's go to this 3d view and you know look at this you know I, we basically have slope glazing we have in this case it's a wall so that's why we get these these absurd uh, constraints i guess you could call them in this case so this is in fact why i would not use a wall even though you could I would not use a wall because it just is a mess. It, you're going to be selecting this all day long when you get lots of other model elements here, but let's use slope glazing. It, this is the more traditional way of doing it. Not the right way or not the wrong way. Perhaps one of the better ways. So let's come in here to roof. And yes, we'll place it on level two. And we're going to go from generic 12 inch to slope glazing. And again, we're just, it's the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and draw. Well, just so this is, of course, sizable enough. We'll make this pretty sizable. Go ahead and make this maybe 30 feet by 30 feet. And we'll probably end up doubling it on the other side. But that's fine for now. And so, you know, I don't want this to be like that, sloped like that. I want this to go in one direction. I will say this will work and we'll get to an example of this here in just a second. But I want to come in here and I don't want to deal with these, you know, all these sides. So let's go ahead and remove the angles here. So we'll define the slope. We don't want to define the slope there, but I'll make this instead of nine to 12. Let's go ahead and put this at a, a four, you know, four to 12. So that's great. So it's going to slope up here and I, I'm doing, the, I'm including this here because I'm going to show you the difference. See what I'm selecting. I'm just selecting <laughs> this basically the extents of this slope glazing, which is just nothing right now, but you could see what this slanted wall does. It seems so appealing to slant a wall, but it really isn't whenever you get to this kind of a situation. It's just ridiculous, so I wouldn't do it. Let's get rid of that. We don't want that. So here we go. Looking at this from a top view, we just have a blank slate. There's nothing special going on here, but we do need to add in our actual, you know, tongue and groove. As you know, I'm not going to actually model in the tongues and the grooves coming together. We just want to see the result, which despite this being incorrect, it's going to look like shiplap. That's basically what we're doing here. We're creating shiplap. Sorry to say, that's what it is. Um, so how can we do that? Well, if you're familiar with curtain wall modeling at all, we can come up here and we can always go to curtain grid and we can start adding curtain grids. And maybe, you know, there's six inches. Makes perfect sense. Let's come in here and, you know, six inches. Boom, boom, boom. So this is cool. This is real easy, but forget this. We're not doing this. What a waste of time. Okay. 
So we have our type, which is slope glazing, but I'm going to come in here, edit the type. I want to duplicate it. I don't want to whatever, but we're going to call this tongue and groove. With that, what are we actually doing here? Well, again, this is basically the exact same as any sort of curtain wall we're, we're going to see here. And so we just need to deal with these mullion types and like the spacing and all this, whatever. Um, so here we go. We've got our grid layout. Well, right now it's at the none. We see this one giant blank square. Okay, we don't want that. Well, let's go ahead and set this to something. Well, in this case, it's a fixed number or a distance. That's probably what we want. Well, if we know in this case that our tongue and groove, basically our boards, our wooden boards are six inches, you know, nominally, let's go ahead and actually do this as a fixed distance. So I don't care how, you know, how long or wide or whatever my ceiling is. I only care that my boards are six inches wide. All of them are, regardless of how wide the ceiling is. So my fixed distance is going to be six inches, half a foot. And then adjust for mullion size. Well, I don't care about this now, and I'll show you why I don't. So I'll go ahead and leave that checked. It's perfectly fine. But then the rest here um, is exactly why I don't care about this. I don't want mullions. Um, you can put mullions there if you want. If if you want to you know, just show a bit of a, a... If you really want to get like to the next level of modeling, that's where you would ultimately put more detail into this. You'd have just like a 16th or an eighth of an inch max probably of some sort of a, a groove or something that would appear to be like a split between each board. I don't think that's necessary because we're going to get a similar looking effect. Now do it if you want, definitely do it if you want, because it's very easy to do. We can put a little moy in here, get a little distance. Great. So I'm going to hit okay. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's done. You know, like, like what we we're doing before we can click on any of these and we can see they're obviously six inches apart. Exactly. Um, great. This is awesome. So at this point, we're kind of done. I'm not saying we're done, but we're, we're done. We, we've added our six inches board. Um, what I'm going to do is just simply mirror this on the other side because we want to be able to see this happen somewhere else. We can mirror this there. That looks good. Looking at this in 3D, of course, we have this same effect. It doesn't look that bad. Of course, it doesn't look that great either. <laughs> um, obviously, we're a little bit off here and of course just now at this point just know that this is like we have individual boards and so these individual boards will need to have a certain material or whatever you want um obviously this is now glass now we don't want it to be glass does it matter if it's glass i don't know there's probably some default wood we can use which is perfectly fine none of this matters but that's perfectly fine that'll work so there's our wood but i want to get rid of this because i want to actually duplicate this mirror this correctly um, actually even though I am going to mirror this I would not end up ultimately mirroring this at the end of the day because of how we can get this slope glazing to work for us and let me show you that just right now because yeah this is fine obviously it's it's not perfect but just like we did before let's go ahead and I'm going to select this here I'm going to create similar hit, or hit CS and of course I want this on level two so I'm going to do this exact same thing, but just slightly different. And of course, I don't want to be at this view. I want an actual top view. Um, let's go ahead and get something close. I'll do my 30 by 60. Of course, this isn't perfect, but 30 by 60 is what we want. And so what I'm going to do is make sure that these two are not defining the slope. We want these, both of these two. And I want to select these and, of course, make sure I have that 4 inch instead of four, 9. And so we put this together and look at that. That's exactly the same thing. Now, all we need to do is change this from a basic roof to my slope glazing, which is not actually slope glazing, the tongue and groove that we want. And there we go. There's my tongue and groove. It, this, is, this is actually perfect, <laughs> whereas this is not. So I will get rid of both of these. We don't want these. And make sure you select the entire system and delete that, of course. So there we go. And of course, I'm going to do this one more time just for the sake of it, of course. And I don't need this to be a perfect square, but that will work. I'm going to define all the edges there at four inches. Make sure it's my tongue and groove. And you'll see this works really easy. It's simple. It's basically working by itself now. Now, obviously, maybe I want these to move a different direction. And if I want to do that, maybe I can just turn them. And so at this point, Let's come in here and I'll duplicate this tongue and groove too. I wouldn't always leave it at that, but I am. And so how do we do this? Well, this is using grid layout one. Well, 
in this case, I just need to use grid layout too. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but with grid layout too. I don't want to leave both of them or I'll get a crosshatch, which maybe you want that. I don't know. But I'm hitting none there. And then just like that, this will be rotated. It takes a second because it's lots of profiles working here. Just look at that. We have our tongue and groove going the exact direction that we want. And it's like the joins are so nice. This would take you so long to do if it were not some sort of a roof. And the idea that it's being a roof, you can do this so easily. So this is awesome. So at this point, I mean, I'm going to take this into twin motion just so we can see what it would look like. Now, this is where I think things are going to get a bit off. And I'll show you that. Basically, if you only care about this from a documentation standpoint, you're done. Easy, really easy. Add a material to it, done really easy here but i am actually going to take this into twin motion and we can see what this looks like all right in motion i have added a floor because why not it seems to make the most sense um but so the problem with this in twin motion of course i it's adding wood here nicely for me already but it's really hard to see the actual panels now the nice thing of course about twin motion is i can select the individual panels but at the end of the day this isn't helping me out of, this isn't helping me out that much so obviously let's get a nicer looking wood and I'll show you the result that we're ultimately going to get. Now, I'm not necessarily happy about this, nor is this the end of the world. Um, the only thing that I can say is that we are saved by some of Twin Motion materials. Now, I'm going to use a solid wood just to show you what I mean first before we do that. But let's get the solid wood and just dump it on top here. I'm going to make the scale a little bit bigger so we can see it. Of course, then I want to I want to turn this 90 degrees because that would be incorrect the way it is. So here we go. Obviously, <laughs> it doesn't look bad. Um, but I can't say that it's exactly perfect. Um, the, what I don't like here, and the thing to know about the way the UV settings work, the way materials are applied, is that each individual being its own model means that the material pattern, the material texture, is going to start repeating each time you have a new model element. And in this case, it's the exact same, repeated multiple times. So it looks awful. Now, would this pass some kind of rendering? Fine. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. No, but does it look great? No, it really does not. I'm not particularly happy with it. So what's the workaround? Well, the workaround is to one, and this is what I like. What the, this is the sound. This sounds more like what I would like, but it might not even result in something that we really want. And that is the what I had said previously, where you make a mullion profile that is an eighth of an inch, and it's recessed, and you really get kind of a nice shadow line in between each panel. Even though that's not quite natural, it would actually be flush. So it's hard to tell. It really is hard to tell what would make that look really nice. Uh, but besides that, the next best thing is a different material within Twin Motion, And that happens to be these. Uh, there are a few here. Uh, a few here that <laughs> appear to be some sort of a ship lap or uh, a tongue and group system. So let's go ahead and put this on here. We can make this like th the scale is going to be very dependent here. But then our rotation, we want to make sure they get that correct. So the problem here, again, is going to be that it's repeating. Um, but it's it's a little less obvious. Of course, we need to make sure that we have our scale kind of perfect. And you can see what happens. Um, <laughs> it's kind of ignoring. The best way I can show you is that's one panel. <laughs> Let's go to this one panel here. And so basically, we want to get this lined up. And so maybe that's 10, maybe that's 12, maybe it's 11. Um, it's hard to tell, but we also need to start translating it. So there, there's a lot of work that needs to happen here as far as getting this looking correct. But um, that's the best thing I can say. Maybe it's 0.15 or 0.16. Obviously, I need to go larger. I need to get larger with my scale. In this case, it's maybe 12. And obviously, this there's a lot of back and forth that needs to go on here to make sure this looks good and continues to match and all this. But... Uh, you know, it, it isn't that bad, but ultimately that's pretty close. Not beautiful, not perfect, um, but it's looking close enough. And so with that, we can come down here and see, yeah, it's repeating a lot, but at least up close, it's okay. I wish there were a better way to kind of randomize the materials, but there's not. You'd have to make them all different types of panels and blah, blah. It's just a mess. So that's just, just kind of know that this is going to happen when you use that type of a system because you're getting the same thing over and over again because of the different model elements, the way it is. I wish it weren't the case. I wish it would look better than this, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. And what can I say? It's not bad, but it's not great. Not the end of the world, but that's how it works. So 
that is tongue and groove. Uh, definitely use slope glazing. Definitely leverage the curtain wall settings that you have built into that because that's what it's going to help you for documentation purposes. The documentation took four seconds, whereas the rendering part was going to take a little more finagling. If I wanted to do the, the rendering part, I would probably just make it a solid roof, but use this material that actually does have those lines in there and I can get them every six inches apart and uh, be good to go and it wouldn't be repeating that material so that will do for this video we looked at tongue and groove ceilings and this applies to walls whatever you want but I would do the slope glazing definitely do that if you happen to learn something please demolish that like button it really helps me out a lot also maybe just demolish the like button if you happen to like the video that helps too of course so again that will do it I will see you in the next video have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching